Friends, we have a very important passage in Jeremiah today that tells us about a new covenant that's coming. This idea of new covenant is picked up in the New Testament, of course, and so we have Christ referring to uh, the Lord's Supper. He says this is the blood of the new covenant. Uh, that's, that's something that tells us that the new covenant that we have in the church as we celebrate the Lord's Supper is the new covenant that Jeremiah was speaking about in chapter 31 that we look at today. In fact, uh, the apostles are called ministers of the new covenant. And the very passage that we read in Jeremiah 31 is quoted in Hebrews 8.8. 8 to talk about these realities that the church has in the New Covenant era. So let's take a look at the chapter. First of all, it begins with the words, at that time. And, and that language is used to talk about some future era where the date is not being specified, but it's something that's coming. And at that time, something is going to happen. Uh, declares the Lord, I will be the God of the clans of Israel and they shall be my people. So you would think, well, this must just be about Israel. And yet we know that with this quote of new covenant, that actually it includes not only Israel. So there's a period now that this is written from the standpoint of the exile, that it's important for people to realize God still has a purpose for Israel. And a lot of that has to do with the coming of the Messiah, that there's going to be a hundred, hundreds of years before the Messiah comes. So that's that's a very important purpose for Israel. And it will be the Messiah, though, who will inaugurate the new covenant with his own blood. This reality of God giving a Messiah to his people and then giving Jesus to all the nations of the world and to all who would call upon his name, this is expressed in these wonderful words. I have loved you with an, with an everlasting love. Uh, I will build you and you shall be built. There shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim in the northern area there. Arise, they're going to say, and let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. So there's some future era when somehow the warring factions of God's people will be brought together. And God says, I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. See, even those northern tribes that had such a devastating history after they were so afflicted by the Assyrian Empire, even those Israelites, God says, um, Ephraim is my firstborn. And then we think about Jesus as the firstborn of God, really the, the, the eternal Son of God. And it, it says here, my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, declares the Lord. But then right after this idea that, that they'll be satisfied with his goodness, there's a warning that's given regarding the suffering that will take place as we move towards the one Israelite who will be the savior of mankind. Here's what it says in it, and it's quoted in the New Testament to talk about the suffering connected uh, with uh, those who were trying to defeat Jesus from his infancy. It says this, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. And this is quoted in connection with the slaughter of these baby boys around Bethlehem. So keep your voice from weeping, this encouraging word comes, and your eyes from tears, for there's a reward for your work, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future. Now, how could that be? If they're mourning, uh, then the, the children must be dead, and yet there's this future and a hope still that remains. That means resurrection life. So here we finally come to this point. It says, the Lord has created a new thing on the earth, a woman encircles a man. There's our Messiah, actually born of woman, born under the law, born as a part of the Israel of God, but now the king and commander 
of the new covenant people. And so we come towards the end of it. It says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God. They shall be my people. They shall know me and I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Do you get this picture? You see, there was still a role for Israel, especially in the coming of the Messiah. A woman would encircle a man. That one man would be the savior of mankind. That means that there's a purpose for Israel. And of course, there's a purpose for Jesus. Father, we thank you for the coming of the new covenant hero, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we, as his people, give you worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, friends.